Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm super excited today to talk to you about some brand new updates to our set filter. Previously, we introduced a new expression data type that allowed you to use a simple inline syntax in your value boxes pretty much anywhere in Xano. We then introduced updates to our git filter, allowing you to use an inline syntax when retrieving data from objects and arrays. This allowed you to avoid the use of stacked loops and conditionals to return your data in exactly the way that you need it. Now we are giving the same treatment to our set filter, allowing you to apply inline expressions right in the filter to manipulate and transform your data in exactly the way that you need a whole lot faster and more efficient. If you haven't already, make sure to review the previous videos on the expression data type and the Git filter updates before diving into these new updates to the set filter, as this is going to make a lot more sense once you're familiar with those previous updates. Let's hop over to Xano and I'll show you how it works. Here we are in Xano and we're actually continuing to work with the same data set that we worked with in the Git example. So let me just show you what that looks like in case you're not familiar. So I'll go ahead and run this and we'll hop over to the debugger. We're just working with a sample list of products. So each product has an ID created at name, description, price, stock count, discount percentage, and so on. So far, what we've done is we have traversed through this data and we have returned all products with a price greater than 700, with a rating greater than 4.5, and that are in stock. And we showed some examples on how to do this using normal functions and filters as well as using the updates to the Git filter. But in this video, I want to take that a step further and I want to start showing how we can manipulate that data at the same time. So let's say, as an example, we want to capitalize the product name. So with normal functions and filters, the way this would work is we would start by creating our empty variable. We would loop against all of those products and then we would apply our conditional that checks the price, the rating, and the stock. And then if the product qualifies, we would apply a two upper filter to the product name, which will just capitalize all of the letters of that product name. And then we would add that to our empty variable, which ultimately just contains our results. So we can go ahead and run this and you can see what this looks like. So here is our list of products, but as you can see, that name has been fully capitalized. As your first introduction to doing this with the set filter instead, I'm going to show you what that expression would look like. So we're targeting products.response, which is just coming from our external API request. So our variable is named products. And then we're looking at the response key inside of that object. So that's right there. And then we are using the get filter with our expression to get values from the result key, which is our list of products. And we have our condition here, of course, that says we're checking the price to see if it's greater than 700 and the rating to see if it's greater than 4.5. And finally, the stock to see if it is greater than zero. Once we've retrieved our data, we can begin using the set filters with expressions to manipulate the data. So in this case, we are just taking the name of the product. So right here, our expression starts with two dollar signs, and that just represents the current name that we are iterating through. We have a pipe character and then the two upper filter applied here. So we are taking the name and we are applying that filter to it. So now when we run this, we can see in our result that those names are now capitalized. We can even chain multiple filters to the same expression. So let's go ahead and apply a two lower filter here. We'll go ahead and save those changes and run this again. And you can see that our product names are now lowercase. We can do text concatenation right in our set as well. So let's just do hello and we'll apply a tilde right there. We'll go ahead and save and run this again. And you can see we now have hello before all of our product names. In this next example, we're going to be iterating on what we just did, but instead of only adjusting the product name, we're also going to be adjusting the price at the same time. So you've already seen my loop and conditional here, so I won't go over those again but let's take a look at this update variable here. So what's happening? So this update variable is starting with a dollar sign, just a dollar sign character. We then apply a concat filter to that. With the price, 
but we're also multiplying that price by 1.36 and then applying a number format filter to that. So what's happening here? We are building a human readable price as opposed to what currently exists in the database. So let's go ahead and run this and I'll show you what that end result looks like. So you can see our prices now have dollar signs, commas, and two decimal places as expected. How would we do this using the set filter instead? So this is what our create variable step looks like using the set filter. So we of course first have our get that just returns our products. We then have our first set that takes the name and applies the uppercase filter to that. And then we are setting our price. So what does this string look like? So at the start of our expression, we just have our dollar sign character and a tilde. So this represents that we are starting with our dollar sign. And then the tilde is again, just concatenation. So taking two values and mashing them together. We then have two dollar signs that just represents the price value that we're currently working with. We are multiplying it by 1.36. And then we have our pipe character and we are applying the number format filter with the arguments that that filter requires right after. Let me actually show you that on the normal filter. So we have number format. Number format requires the number of decimals to apply, the decimal separator and the thousands separator. So if we go back here, we can see that we have our decimals here. Our decimal separator is the period and then the thousands separator is the comma. So these arguments are just being passed right here. So we can, of course, see this in action using the set filter. So we'll run this and we get the same results as expected. But we've done that without using loops and conditionals and separate update variable steps for each item that we want to change. We've just done it all in one swing right in this expression. Hopefully you're able to start recognizing the power that is unlocked by having the support for inline expressions in the get and set filters and everywhere else inside of the product. I want to show you one more example just to kind of drive it home. So here we are in my final example function stack. We of course start by getting the products from the API. We create our empty variable and then we start by looping against those products. We have a conditional that's checking to see if the price is greater than 700 and the writing is greater than 4.5. And we are also checking the stock in there as well. We are then updating the product name to be capitalized with the two upper filter. And this is where we start to introduce some additional complication. So we have another conditional inside of our conditional inside of the loop. And this second conditional checks to see if the product stock is greater than 50. And depending on the result of that, we are doing different things to the price of that product. So if the product stock is greater than 50, we are multiplying that price by 0 0.9. If it is not, then we are multiplying it by 1.3. We then update the price variable one more time to build our human readable price value. So we have the dollar sign first with the concat filter and our price with the number format filter applied. So let's go ahead and run this and we'll just see what the end result looks like. So here we have our prices formatted as expected, but not only are they formatted properly, but the conditional here determined what we were going to multiply the price by. Having those stacked conditionals is not necessarily a bad thing, but if it can be avoided, that is always ideal. And so let's take a look and see how we addressed this in one set filter. So here is our create variable step. We of course are getting our products first and adjusting the name. And then for the price, here's what we are doing in our expression and bear with me because it's going to get a little crazy. We are first using a feature called anchored selection, which is supported in both the get and set filters. Anchored selection allows me to reference data outside of the value that I'm currently working with. So right now I'm currently working with price and you know, by now, that we would reference the price by using the double dollar sign. But what if I need to look at something outside of price in this expression? Well, with anchored selection, it essentially just follows the hierarchy of the variable that we're working in, and it starts at zero. So zero would be our entire list of products, and then one would be an individual product object. So we are using dollar sign one to look at an individual product object. And we're looking at the stock value inside of that. And we are checking to see if it is greater than 50. 
the question mark essentially denotes an if then statement. So if this is true, we then apply the following expression to our price. So we add the dollar sign, we have the tilde for our concatenation, and then we are taking the price, which is again represented by two dollar signs, multiplying it by 0 0.9, and then applying our number format filter. We use a colon to determine our else result. So if this is not true, which means the stock is less than 50, then we multiply the price by 1.3 and apply the same number format filter. So that means in one line of the set filter, we have avoided creating this conditional, creating this update variable, creating this second conditional, creating these two update variables, and creating a third update variable, and creating this array add to end. By using the inline syntax instead, we were able to do all of this in one step with just the get and set filters. What you're able to do with this inline syntax is practically limitless. It not only enables you to build faster and more efficiently, but it also enables more socialization of what you're working on. So maybe this expression here would be really helpful to somebody in the Xano community. They can copy and paste this and take it right over to their own set filter and use it immediately. Of course, there's a lot here that I'm not able to show you in a quick video, so please make sure to head over to our documentation to read more about these updates to the set filter, as well as the expression data type and the git filter updates. I want to thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helps you get started using these updates to our set filter. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. You can also reach out to us on the Xano community at community.xano.com or via support chat inside of Xano. We'll see you in the next one.